Hi folks, if you're looking for a Kafka producer example, you are in the right spot. Let's start with this tutorial by starting up Zookeeper. Let's start up Kafka after that. You should know how to do this by now, right? Okay, also let's show you where the source code is for this example. It is here, if you can see this, it's in their T. McGrath. That's me under Kafka examples. Here's also it in GitHub and my little attempts at humor now and again. We have a repo named Kafka Examples and it contains, wait for it, Kafka Examples. Hardy har har. I have cloned this repo and then imported it into IntelliJ. You can see this now. I'll hopefully make this a little bit better for the viewing in full screen mode here. Um, this is, I've done other tutorials with this, um, this particular repo. I did the con Kafka consumer example. So we're going to just build upon that. Again, it's on source, Scott, main, Scala, com, super glue, Kafka producer example is what we're going to be running here today. And we're going to be doing it with the idea that you're watching this screencast and knowing that there's an accompanying tutorial, a written tutorial. So I'll just go through these things quickly for a more detailed description of what's contained here in this producer. Definitely check out the, uh, the tutorial, the written tutorial with it. So let's jump in. Let's take a look at how we might run this particular example and then we'll go through the, uh, some of the code in particular. So I'm going to jump back out to a terminal here and I'm going to start up this Kafka console consumer and it's going to be set to the topic that we're going to be writing to in this producer. So let's start that up. We just want to verify that this producer is working. So if we come back to the producer and we can right click on it over here and we could simply hit run. Nothing fancy really. We'll see some output here and then an exit after we have looped through five times. Let's just go back out to the console for a second. Oh, the value. So yeah, good. We're seeing the value here. Um, also here. We're sending this in to the send function, producing a new producer record, sending it to the configured topics. If I hit command B, I'll come up to the top on that. Um, sending in a particular key and the value. So we can see that it's working, but let's take a look at the, the code in a little bit more detail. And again, this is all described in the tutorial. Maybe we wanna, we wanna change some of the properties here. I just call out that this might seem a little strange. Some of the things that you might be Googling for around the properties might actually look different than this all cap axe config for example this is just a convenience if you hit command b on a mac or the equivalent on some other operating system you'll see that it's actually just a shortcut to this axe config and then you've got all some of the, the documentation here as well for you so whenever you see these properties these all caps properties notes this shorthand for the actual config values that you might see someplace else like batch size so I just wanted to call that out and again the tutorial calls that out as well um, so you can you can do some messing around here with some of these axe config again this is this is just a simple example to you know get your confidence up and, and more comfort around writing your own producers all right so let's um let's change this up a little bit um, you'll notice here that we've got one send method, but we've got another one that's commented out. Let's do that. Let's comment this one out and take a look at an example where we're using a callback. And this callback is defined right here, where we're just simply overriding the on completion method of all the callback interface, part of the producer package up here. And Part of the implementation is that we're going to receive this record metadata as well as any of the possible exceptions listed here. This just allows you to customize some, maybe some retries or how you want to handle 
Um, some of the other exceptions here. We'll just leave it light for now. So let's take a look at actually running this in a callback example. Um, and maybe let's do it a little bit different. Um, let's, yeah, what the heck. Let's use our consumer example here. So I'm going to go out, but before I do that, I'm going to go out to the terminal here. I'm going to control C this to stop it. Come back to the con Kafka consumer example here. I'm going to give it a different group ID. Just something so there's no committed offset there. Um, let's fire this up. Where are we there? <laughs> Run. So now we're running this consumer example. If we come back to the producer, and we're going to run this now to show an example of calling the send method with not only a produce, producer record, but also this optional callback argument as well, which we should call on each message that comes through on the callback after being committed. So let's run this up. Actually, let's do something different. Let's also run this in debug mode. So I'm going to set a breakpoint here and then IntelliJ up at the top here. If I'm moving too quickly, we'll go to debug. And what we should see, what we should have seen is not that consumer example running. And let's try this again. Yeah, let's cancel this because what we're actually doing is running the Kafka consumer over here. What I wanted to do was run this Kafka producer example in debug mode. So we'll see this now. Let's run that correctly. We'll see the, the debugger stopping at breakpoints. We'll be able to inspect some of the things that are that are available to us to query from record metadata for things like offset, time set, etc. The topic partition. There are there is no exception, so that's null. Whoops, not really sure what happened there. Let's try that again. This exception null. So then we can continue to go through each one of these breakpoints. There'll be multiple because we're lift, going through five times, or we can just stop. Um, all the breakpoints as well. We'll just continue to go through. Now, next, if we come back to our run window here, we should have seen exactly what we expected. So we saw then now um, some of the the messages coming through with the key and the value. And then if we come back to our debug screen, what we should have seen in the console itself is the callback, which is OU crafty wily metadata you, and then the example topic partition and the value of it. So, um, yeah, that's it. We got that rolling. There's a just wanted to show a couple of different ways that we can um, produce and then also verify that the production happened. In this case, we used the cop the previously created Kafka consumer. And we saw it in the console. And then just finally, if you like the command line, I'd also call out that if we come back to terminal and I've got something teed up here for us, you can also use Kafka console consumer. And you can specify things like from beginning. And then you can do some things like the key separator and actually to print the key as well. Remember in the beginning here, we didn't actually show the key. So if we fire this up, We'll go all the way back in time to all the messages I've sent to that example. And then in this case now we'll see the key as well as the value. So that hopefully that helps as well. So that's it. This is a couple of different ways how to run the Kafka producer, running it in IntelliJ, also in the debugger, and a couple of different ways that you can verify the output. Hopefully this helps. And if you have any questions or suggestions for improvement, definitely let me know. Thanks. See you later.